everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I see so many of you are here. You guys are ready to go. Good evening. Good evening. I pray that you guys have had a beautiful day today as we prepare to kick off this three-day fast with Blessed and Bossed Up. Hey, Kishé, how are you? Hey, Cami, how are you? I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm so glad all of you are coming in. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Come on, come on. Come in, come in. It's your girl. It's your girl, Tina. I'm here and I'm excited. I'm excited, excited, excited. Aren't you guys excited about the three days that's up ahead? The breakthroughs and the revelations that you guys are going to receive in the next couple of days. I want all of you to, to, to type breakthrough, type breakthrough. If you're looking for God to do something for you today, tomorrow, and every day beyond that, Type breakthrough in the comments. Type breakthrough right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Breakthrough, breakthrough, because that is what we are seeking and desiring of the Lord. And the Lord will meet us in this space, in this place, as we partner with the Holy Spirit to receive all that God has for us today. Come on, 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 come on. This is going to be an interactive, engaging sort of thing. So you, I'm, I'm a woman that's full of passion and fire. So, you know, y'all buckle up and knuckle up in the spirit because I'm, I'm I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm already on go. I just came out my closet in preparation with the Holy Spirit for all that he wants for you all today. So I am so excited. So, 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 so excited. So we'll go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and start in prayer really quickly. She said, buckle up, buckle up. Oh, thank you, Kavaya. Said I'm looking good too. Girl, that's the glory of the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord Rise. Okay, I'm not a singer, so let me not do that. Okay, y'all. Okay, 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 okay. We here, we here, we here. Let's go ahead and, and prepare in prayer. Um, and let's 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 get it going. Let's get it going. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, God. I thank you for every single one of these young ladies right now that have joined this live, that have come on to petition your your power, your strength, your love, whatever it is that you have ordained into their lives. God, I yoke my faith with their faith as we partner with the Holy Spirit. We invite the fire of the Holy Ghost right here, right now, this day for you to release as we receive with arms and hands open wide in the name of Jesus. We are here, oh God, to receive all that you have for us this day, God. God, help us, God, to decrease in our own minds and our own wills and ourselves and help you help us, God, to receive as you increase in us all that you have for us. So God, we empty ourselves out as you pour yourself in. Fill us now, fill us again, fill us all the more for the days that are to come. For we are your humble servants and we place our hearts and everything that concerns us at the feet of Yeshua right now in the name of Jesus. For him to gather up, for him to take to encamp, to cover in the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We decree and declare that all that we speak, we shall see, that all that we say we shall have, we will have according to your will, according to your word this day in Jesus mighty and matchless name for it is so and so it shall be this day in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am Tina. My name is Tina. For those of you that don't know me, um, my name is Tina. I'm the warrior princess and I, my ministry flawed and free. I'm the host of flawed and free podcast and ministry. There's a lot of things under that umbrella in my ministry, but I am a spiritual warfare strategist. I am a prophetic prayer warrior and I am a deliverance minister. But above all of those titles that I just gave y'all, I am a servant of God. I am a servant of God first and foremost. And I arise that way and I close 
my day that way because though God has gifted me and has anointed me in certain areas of my life, I want to always make sure that I have postured myself in position for God to use me however he sees fit to use me. So outside of titles, I hate titles anyway, but if you want to call me anything, call me a servant of the most high God. Call me a child of God. Call me a friend of God. I am all of those and some, as we used to say, all of that and a bag of chips. Let it be what it be. Let it, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, I want to allow myself to always empty myself so that he can use me in whatever manner he chooses to in the name of Jesus. Sometimes titles, right, can limit what God wants to do in our lives. And just as we are preparing for this fast, as we are preparing to enter in to the courts of, of God, as we are preparing God to lay our hearts before him, we want him to fill us with what he has for us, not what we have. Move your mind, move your will, move everything that you've thought you were going to do or receive in this day and allow God to show you not only who you are, but whose you are in him in Jesus mighty name. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of you that have joined. Thank you Tatum and her whole team with blessed and bossed up for allowing me the opportunity to serve your platform and the women of God that are on this line today. I thank God for the opportunity that is given because of course it comes through God. Every door that opens is his. This platform is his. Tatum's platform is his. So I I thank him for trusting me. I thank him for trusting me first and foremost. Thank you, Tatum, for trusting me with your platform and your people in the name of Jesus. But they're not ours. They just kind of temporarily loaned to us right? They're his, right? All of you, every single one of you that have joined this broadcast belong to him first. And so he is just allowing us to you and using us as vessels to actually pour in, to pray, to cover, and to bring down heaven into the earth. And so that is what we're here to do today. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. And I am ready to go. Ready, 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 ready. For all of you that don't know me that don't already follow me, make sure you go to Instagram at the flawed and free at the flawed and free Tatum or Kavaya if you'll help me out. And um, I actually, I might be able to, to throw it in here real quick. Uh oh, watch out, y'all. Your girl trying to get a little savvy in these streets with technology. Watch out. Y'all like that quick draw, McGraw. Y'all like that. Y'all like that, huh? I can multitask a little bit, a little bit. Um. So, yeah. So, we here. Thank you, LaShonda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. So, if you're not following me, make sure you go to Instagram. I am on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on YouTube as where you are now. Subscribe and click the bell so you can get all of the notifications. If you're looking for me on YouTube, then just click, just look for Flawed and Free because it's not under the Flawed and Free, it's under Flawed and Free. Now, into today's broadcast. Today's broadcast, we are talking about how to win in warfare. And let me tell y'all, I could talk about God all day long. I have a passion for God, his word. I have a passion for what God has called me to in spiritual warfare. So as I was preparing with the Holy Spirit, he was like, yes, okay, listen, let, 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 let's, let's give it to him this way, that way. And any other way, I said, okay, God, okay, let's get it. Cause he know I will take, baby, we'll be here all night. Y'all all be slain in the spirit, getting delivered, manifesting the whole nine. Cause I like to let the Holy Spirit move and have his way. Hey, Latrice. Hey, how are you cousin? That's my cousin. That's my cousin. Yeah, you better. Yeah, that's my cousin, y'all. Okay, so uh, we we moving on. We moving on, y'all. Don't pay me no mind. Don't pay me. If you want to join in, you can join in because that's just kind of how I am anyway. How to win in spiritual warfare. There's three things, three Ps. There's a lot we're going to talk about tonight really quickly, but three Ps, three Ps. I want you guys, if you're taking notes, if your Kavaya's is laughing, <laughs> Girl, you I'm, I'm a whole clown in these streets for real, for real. I'd be like, God, you sure you want me to, to talk to your people? Because, you know, your girl be a little bit, you know, but 
Hey, he know who I, who I is. He know who I be in these streets, but I be in these spiritual streets. So that's all that matter, right? Dragging demons up and down the road and out. And that's what matters in Jesus name. She said, love the energy. <laughs> I'm sorry for some it's too much. Some people be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. I was tired. I was trying to just kind of slide in here and I didn't know I was going to get bust upside my head with all it is. But this is what it is. How to win in warfare. Three P's. If you're taking notes, the first P is posture. First P is posture. The second P is position. The second P is position. And the third P is prayer. The third P is prayer. So for those that are taking notes, three P's, I want you guys to think about as I outline this for you, as we go further into how to win in warfare, we're going to go through this really quickly. We're going to be engaging and talking. Please feel free. If you have questions, I'll open up a Q and A in the end, try to save what you can towards the end. So, cause I probably will miss it. And so I'll open up a few minutes when I'm done so that we can, I can answer questions for you and anything that you have that you didn't quite get or pick up. So posture, heart posture, heart posture is very, very important whenever you are entering in to a fast, right? Right. We're preparing for a fast. Your posture determines your power, right? Your posture determines your power. And I'm going to tell you why, because God searches and examines the heart of man. If you are going into a fast because you just want to get a new car and a new house and a new man, I'm going to tell you right now, access denied, access denied. You can pretty much count on your prayers hitting the ceiling and coming back down. And that is not what we're here for in these streets. In these spiritual streets, we need our prayers to press in and push through into not only the first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven. If you follow me, I'll explain what that is down the road, the first, second, and third heaven. But we need to make sure that our prayers are not going and bouncing off the walls, hitting the ceiling and coming back down. So therefore, you must petition your heart in a posture to aid, to receive, and to believe that whatever it is that you are desiring and seeking from God, whatever it is that you are asking of God, whatever it is that you are willing to fully surrender your will unto his. And so your posture is important because if you come to him with the wrong intent, with the wrong motive, then you will not make it. Okay. Somebody said I'm buffering. Press a one if you can see me fine. And, and two, if there are issues, the devil is a liar. He is a liar. I bind every demonic power over the airways, the cell phone frequencies, telephone, internet, in the name of Jesus. I bind every power and principality, anything that is trying to hinder, block, or delay the plans of God for this broadcast in Jesus' name. Okay, I see some ones. I see some ones. So you guys can hear me. Maybe it's just um, the young lady that made mention she was having some trouble, but the devil is a liar. We will keep going in Jesus mighty name. So we're still on the, on the, on the portion of posture. We're speaking on posture. So when you go and you petition God for a fast, and I know a lot of us come with our list and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the list. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with literally laying low on the flow before God and literally pouring out your situation, every matter situ and concern and circumstance that concerns you and placing it at the feet of the father. That is exactly what we should be doing. So there's nothing wrong with that. But if he doesn't answer, if he doesn't give you the thing in which you're desiring or asking for in the moment that you're asking, will you continue to serve God? Will you continue to wait upon the Lord? Will you continue to seek and search his heart as he searches and examines yours? Will you continue despite the tangible evidence of the thing that you are looking and desiring? God said it is better to give than to receive. And even in that scripture where it's referencing money and, 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 and finance and that sort of thing, but giving is not just in the matter of finance, giving and receiving can be in the, in, in the form of a blessing. It could be wealth. It could be wisdom. It could be faith. It could be any of these things, spiritual gifts, anything that encompasses what you need to operate and perform in the earth as God has 
purposed you to, not what you just want to do, not what you feeling, not to get a man in your bed during at night, not to get the, the uh, win the lottery, not to get a new house and a new car, but literally because you want to serve God, because you want his will above and over your own. And God will align his desires with yours, his will with yours. If you lay yours down, then you will then begin to open up your heart to his will and your desires will match. They will meet each other in that space. So you continue to be about your father's business. As you are about your father's business, he will be about your business. So whether it be your children, your spouse, the spouse to be, if you're dating and waiting and mating or none of the three, whatever it is, whatever season you're in right now, God will meet you in that space. You just have to open up your heart, pour yourself out so he can pour himself in. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. So whatever it is that you need, whatever it is that you lack, whatever it is, if you seek the kingdom of God first, then he will align strategically and position you with all that you need that you that that you desire that he's will for your life. So you don't have to worry about the when, the why and the how, because all you got to do is keep your focus on him and he will add everything that is needed in your life at the appointed time and at the appointed season, according to his divine timetable and calendar. So don't worry about it. If you feel like you're behind, if you feel like you, you didn't got left on the side of the road, don't worry about that. Just continue to be about your father's business. And as you are about his business, he's going to be about yours. The next thing I want you to keep in mind is prayer. Prayer. You need a solid prayer life. You need a committed prayer life. Not the now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord, my soul to take, cut it out, cut it out, cut it out. Right. We don't have time for these popcorn prayers. We need to be petitioning and asking God to help us mature in him. And how do we do that? We do that by being obedient. We do that in commitment to God through fasting and prayer so that he can expand our mindset so he can renew our minds so that we can then receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, which will then give us the direction, the plots, the schematics, everything Thing that you need to get from your now to your next. My ministry, that's what I do. I help people that are stuck in the middle mindset, that are stuck and spiritually stagnated, that have left Egypt, that are stuck in the middle trying to get to the promised land, and they trying to figure out how to get from their now to their next, how to be released from the flaws of their past into the freedom of their future flawed and free. That is what you are. You are free to be you. You're free to be me. We're all free to be who God has called us to be. How do we determine God's purpose and plan for our life? Your purpose is found in the midst and in the middle of the thing that you love and the thing that you loathe. L-O-A-T-H-E. Whatever you love and whatever you hate. And so therefore you can find your purpose wrapped up real nicely somewhere in the midst of that. And so don't worry about where you are on the spectrum. Don't worry about it. You just continue to surrender your mind, your heart, your spirit, your will, and everything else that God has ordained for you to give to him. And he will renew it, cleanse it, purify you, purge you of all the demonic powers and things that have been planted that he did not plant. And he will uproot them so that you can receive the fullness of God so that you can then receive that. So prayer, 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 prayer. Now, fasting is important with prayer. We are in this three-day fast. We're preparing to start this fast tomorrow because we're, uh, we're seeking God for whatever he is desiring in our lives for him to do through us, right? Because we are vessels. This isn't our pop platforms. This isn't our podcast. This isn't our life. We were bought with a price by Christ. We were bought with a price by Christ. Therefore, we must live a committed life to him as a servant 
servant of the and, and as, as a child of the most high God. So fasting, fasting is a tiered process. Over time, you will learn as the Holy Spirit leads you how to fast properly. Anybody that's gotten, um, I see Sharla. Hey, sweetheart. Um, anybody that has got, that's gotten counseling through me, that's gotten mentorship through me. Um, there's a process that I carry the people that I mentor through a life of fasting and prayer to teach them and help support them on their journey to spiritual maturity and growth. And that comes through fasting. If you are um, I don't care what type of fast, whether you're doing a dry fast, a three day fast, a six hour fast, a four hour fast, uh, a fast from social media, whatever it is, your heart has to be, your posture has to be right. And your petitions have to be for what is it, God, that you desire of me, not just what you can give me, not just what you can do for me, God, but what is it can I do for you? What is it that you have designed for me to will and purpose in my my life for you. And so therefore your, your fasting life has to include prayer. If you're turning down your plate or whatever it is that you are using to deny your flesh of, and it is not a sacrifice, then you're doing it in vain. Sis, you are dieting. This is not a quick fix to intermittent diet. This is not a, a, a quick resolve to losing a few pounds. And while I'm at it, let me get a blessing. It don't work that way. Don't work that way because God is going to examine your heart. God is going to see where you are and what you are, why you're there. And he will not even reveal or give with anything to you. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, y'all. Sorry, y'all. Congratulations, Dr. Sharla. I got to put that out there to my mentee. I love you, Sharla. And I'm so, 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 so proud of you. I want to tell the whole world you deserve it. God did it in Jesus name. So I'm so proud out of you, Dr. Walker. Woo, woo, woo. So shout out to Sharla. She deserves it. She um, And God wants you to know that he is very, very, very pleased with you. All of your sacrifices, everything that you have done to move from, from, from your now to your next, that you have surrendered to God, you deserve it. And God is going to pour out his blessings on you in the season that is to come. God is going to pour out on you, Sharla. He already has. The wealth transfer has already begun and it will continue in your life and in the saints of God's life. And, and, and it's already begun. It's already begun. So position and prepare in this season as you guys move forward into your fasting. So yes, fasting, it could be whatever it is that the Lord leads you to do. Do not try to fast because you are watching your sister in Christ that's on a 40 day and God has led her to that. This is not what you want to do. You can hurt yourself trying to cover your trying to fast in somebody else's mantle. I have to fast a lot, a lot because of the mantle on my life and because of the call on my life in deliverance. And so because of that, I live quite a, a committed lifestyle of fasting. And so other people won't fast like I do. I fast as led and I also have a committed day and or days every single week that I fast. And they're strict fast. I fast uh, water only. Um, usually I'll do an intermittent unless God calls me to do three days. And then there's nothing pleasurable to my palate at all. And when he releases me to eat, I'm not eating a hamburger. I'm not eating cookies and shakes at 6.05. If I'm doing a 12 hour, I am eating fruits and veggies. I am eating um, Daniel fast type meals. No salt, no sugar, no fat, no oil, no nothing. Nothing pleasurable to my palate, no sweets, no, 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 none of that. Right. But God will, over the course of time, he will train you up. If you ask the Holy Spirit how he wants you to fast, he will do that and he will meet you in that space. 
And so the third thing that I wanted to talk about is deliverance. God will deliver you, right? So breakthrough is deliverance, right? Breakthrough is deliverance. And so through deliverance, through the breakthroughs that you're seeking God for, he will deliver you in your secret space, in your private space, in your closet, as you turn your plates down and as you deny your flesh, of the carnal things that you desire, the things that are pleasurable to your mind and to your life. He will then be able to, to transform and renew your mind and then you will receive deliverance. I have been delivered countless times by the Holy Spirit in my times of fasting and prayer in my secret space right? There was no minister extracting a demon. Literally, the Holy Spirit came down and delivered me in my house, in my closet. And so you don't have to be in church. You don't have to be anywhere. God will deliver you. Mark 9, um, in Mark 9, there's a story where a boy, a demon was cast out of a boy. Verse 29 um, states, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. So if you don't know this story already, in Mark 9, there was a boy that was demon uh, um, possessed at the time, right? Because the Holy Spirit, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. God was on, Jesus was on earth performing his ministry. So the Holy Spirit had not come yet. So this boy was possessed with a demon. And because of that his father that he they, they he had asked the disciples to cast his demon out the disciples were not able to cast the demon out and so after the guy came up to he comes up to to Jesus and petitions and, and ask God, God, help me, help me get this demon out of my son, out of the boy. The boy was oppressed with a deaf, dumb and mute spirit. I have seen this spirit before in deliverances um, and that deaf, dumb and mute spirit has variances through ADD, ADHD, autism. Um, that is a variation it's of a uh, deaf, dumb, and mute spirit. But we'll talk about that another day if you follow me. So this baby had a mute spirit, a deaf, dumb, and mute spirit that he was possessed with. And he would convulse and seize. And he petitioned for God's help, for Jesus's help to cast this demon out of the boy. And so immediately when the demon saw Jesus, he immediately began to manifest, started foaming at the mouth and convulsing on the ground. Jesus cast the demon out and the disciples asked him, how is this so? Why weren't we able to do it? And so Mark 9 verse 29, I just quoted verbatim, the Lord Jesus Christ said, this kind can come out by nothing. And I read that out of NKJV, the wording in red, Jesus Christ said, by nothing, but prayer and fasting, not just fasting, not just prayer, but by prayer and fasting, right? And so that is why I say prayer, deliverance, all of these things are, is your portion when you fast and when you pray as God continues to renew and transform your mind in preparation for the purpose in your life, for the call on your life. That is what God does. When you surrender yourself to him, his will, he will meet you in that space and you will be delivered. You will receive breakthrough. What is spiritual warfare? Some people don't understand or know what spiritual warfare is. So simply put, war, spiritual warfare is a war between the kingdom of light and it is a war between the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of light is the forces of righteousness. So the forces of righteousness operate under the kingdom of light and the forces of wickedness operate under the kingdom of darkness. So there is a war in the heavenlies. There is a war that is happening in the invisible realm or the spiritual realm or the supernatural. There is a war that is going on 24-7, 365 right? They don't, it doesn't stop when we go to sleep at night. Matter of fact, it increases. The warfare increases at night. And so God is always searching and seeking those that will stand on the wall, those that will pray in the midnight hour, those that will come against the forces of darkness and the kingdom of darkness to pull down the strongholds 
that are in the lives of our families, ourselves, our friends, our business partners, and everything else that is happening in the nation, in your region, in your neighborhood. Everything that you are connected to, there is spiritual warfare going on. So when the saints are asleep at night, when you snooze in, trust and believe there are satanic plots and schemes that are being devised every night, every day to, to, to destroy you and to delay you, to hinder your progress and to stop you from receiving and walking into your calling and purpose. And so witches and warlocks all night, all day are literally preparing and they are committed to the task. It, the, these witches and these warlocks is not sleeping. While the saints are sitting up here saying Mary had a little lamb and counting sheep, they are literally in their spaces uh, making spells and hexes and chants and, and, and grinding up bones, taking pictures of people. And they are seeking to astral project, get into your house, move things around, cause division, disunity and discord into your life. They don't sleep. They get up and they band together to defeat and destroy Christians. That is their sole purpose and plan is to destroy and distract you from walking into your purpose because we are very powerful to the kingdom of God. We are very powerful to Jesus Christ and they know it. They know it, but we don't know it. And so therefore we are lying and allowing the enemy to literally lay with us and come into agreement with whatever it is that he's plotting against us because we're scared of the enemy and we don't want to knuckle up in the spirit and fight back. We don't want to knuckle up. Meanwhile, the enemy is busting you upside your head day after day, night after night, drying up your bank account, messing with your marriage and, and, and um, anything that he just got his hands on. And you just over in a corner cowering and crying because, oh, my God, the devil's busy. Oh, my God. And as I proceed in this, into this teaching, I'm going to give you a new perspective and a point of view to look at this demonic power that's just busted and disgusted. Yeah, you walking around here, broke down, busted and disgusted, trying to figure out why you're under attack. Why, 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 why? Wah, 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 wah. You don't have time for that, sis. You don't have time for that. The enemy is coming for you. I'm going to tell you right now. What is happening in the natural realm is a direct correlation. It is a direct manifestation of the battles either won or the battles either lost in the supernatural, in the spirit realm. So therefore, if you are losing in the natural, if you are getting drugged down these natural streets and drugged down these spiritual streets in the spirit, then that means you doing something wrong, sis, because these demons are beneath you. They don't have any power over you. They are already underfoot. When you recognize who you are, when you recognize the authority and the power that God has given you, then you will see why they don't have anything that you don't give them. So if they are winning in your life and you can't find a job, you can't keep a job, you can't keep a man. You ain't got a dollar in your pocket. You trying to make a dollar out of 15 cent. Every time you get 15 cent, you lose 20 cent. You in the deficit. Every time you look up, then you need to restructure and figure out what am I doing? What am I not doing that is preventing me from receiving the promises of God? What am, what doors are open in my life? What is it that I am doing that I need to do? What area of my life do I need to be delivered? What area of my life do I need to petition in prayer and partner with the Holy Spirit to receive what God has for me? So therefore, whatever is happening in your life, look at your life life, if you are not bearing fruit, if you are not productive, if you are not being prosperous, if you are losing 
every second of the day and every moment of the year, then that is because you need to ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to help you partner with him so that he can show you and reveal to you where you are losing in the supernatural. There are angels looking for work in the heavenly realm. There are angels looking to be dispatched to literally war on your behalf, but you don't know how to pray and petition for God to loose those angels. He can't just go loosen angels to help you. He can't, what does he need you to do? He needs you to open up your mouth, to shift the atmosphere, to shift the atmosphere, to speak it so that he can come into agreement with the word of God. He needs you to put your full armor on and he needs you to knuckle up in the spirit and he needs you to fight back so then he can loose the legions of angels on your behalf so then he can part the heavens and he can pour out his spirit upon you and all of the things that the enemy is seeking to take and steal from you. For you know that the enemy is, has only one mission and plan in life. Life, or maybe three to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Still, kill, destroy. Still, kill, destroy. So that is his only mission for you. You might be partnering with him because you think he's your friend, but he's deceiving you. There is a spirit of deception that has given you temporary gratification in your sin so that he can keep you from receiving what God has for you. Don't fall for it, sis. Don't fall for it, sis. Listen. Listen, Linda, listen, listen and obey. Listen to the will and the word of God and he will make a way of escape. He will make a way of escape. So whatever you are losing in the natural, best believe you are losing in the spirit realm because the spirit realm and the supernatural is more real than the natural. The supernatural, you know why? Because we're spirits. We are spirits in a body. We are spirits in a physical body. So because of that, we're supposed to feed our spirits, not our flesh. We are supposed to be feeding our spirits. We're supposed to be operating in the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be petitioning in prayer in the spirit. Everything we do should first go through the spirit of God in every single thing we do. So therefore, if you are not, it is because you are not enlisting the support and the help of Christ through the spirit of God. Now let's talk about God versus Satan. God versus Satan. I need some of you guys to talk back to me. Y'all talking real good. I see y'all. I see y'all. I see y'all. I see y'all. So God versus Satan. Most people think and believe that in this invisible war, in this supernatural fight that we are up against every day, the average person thinks that the tangible evidence is based upon their work, is based upon how good they pray, is based upon who they're connected to, is based upon lies, 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 lies. Lies, lies. Don't believe those lies. Everything that you need, you already have. Everything God has ordained for you to become or be is all you've already been equipped. All you have to do is lay low on to the flow, to the flow, right? Lay low all the way to the flow. A lot of y'all like to twerk and do all that. I was one of them too. I was the twerking queen. My cousins on the, on the live, Latrice Lester. I was the one that was in it. She'll tell you, you can tell the testimony. I don't care. I was the one teaching and everybody in my family, how to get low, how to twerk one cheek, left cheek, right cheek, both cheeks. I could do it uh, standing on a handstand, right? In my carnal state, in my carnal life. That's what I was doing, right? Just unknown and unaware, right? That I was out here clowning, for Satan. I was out here just living my best life. I live my best life still, but just in a different way. But as we proceed, God is literally looking for spiritual soldiers, spiritual soldiers. Spiritual warfare is the believer's bread. Spirit, spiritual warfare is not just for people like me. It's not just for people that are anointed in deliverance. Spiritual warfare is for every single believer. You know why? Because whether you operate in deliverance or not, whether you operate and understand spiritual warfare or not, 
it's happening. You getting bust upside your head in the spirit, it's happening. They don't care that you don't know how to pray. They don't care that you that they your church doesn't do deliverance. They don't care nothing about it. Matter of fact, they're happy that you're ignorant and unaware because the, de the devil operates because in certain areas of our life and takes precedence and priority because we are ignorant to his devices. Because we are ignorant to the devil's devices, he is then able to destroy and distract us because we we don't know the word of God because we have not taken the time to pray before the Lord to listen to what he has to say. So I am training women warriors through flawed and free. I just got some new people that have joined my deliverance team that I am training up and equipping to empower them to war in the spirit so that they can help the saints of God come into the knowing that of freedom that God has given all of us. God has given us freedom. John 8 and 36 says so that according to him that we are already free for whom the son is set free is free indeed. Everything that happens, every prophecy that has been given, even your life was conceived and thought of before the foundation of the world was even set and you existed in the realm of the spirit before you were manifested through conception, through your mother and your father. So the Lord, the Holy Spirit and the Trinity, they came together and they said, hmm, let's put Latina together. And these are the gifts we're gonna give her. And this is the work she's gonna do. And this is what we are ordained for her life in the earth. And there was a conversation in the realm of the heavens. There was a heavenly conversation uh, with the father, the son and the Holy Spirit. And you were conceived and you were brought into the earth. And so therefore God, is looking for spiritual soldiers. If anybody's listening to Beyonce, what they said they need a soldier. I need a soldier. I need a man that's gonna look out for me. I need a man that's gonna ride for me. I need a man that's gonna, gonna come up for me. I need a man that's gonna lay it down for me. God laid it down. Maybe not in the way that we wanted him to in the natural and our carnal minds. We looking for a man to lay it down and flip it down and rub it down and all that, but y'all know what's up. But God laid his life down. God laid his life down and he shed his blood so that we could be free from eternal damnation and we could receive eternal salvation in the name of Jesus. God laid it down for you. There's no better or a sacrifice that you could get any man or any natural or unnatural in this world for somebody that would lay their life down for you to save you. It ain't a man in these streets that's going to come close to what God has already done for you in the realm of the spirit. God has laid his life down and he is tired of the soggy saints. Are you a spiritual soldier or are you a soggy saint sitting in a pew listening to the watered down gospel that's massaging your mind with all of these feel good messages that say God is love. God is grace. Yes, he is grace. He's full of grace. Yes, he is full of mercy. Yes, he is all of these things. But people forget that God is a God of wrath. Remember, he's the same God that turned over tables in the synagogue. And if you read any part of Revelations, you see that God ain't no jizz oak. God is not playing in these streets. When he says vengeance is the Lord's, that's what he means. Trust and believe there are consequences to the decisions that you make in this life. There are consequences to what you do. You will be held accountable on judgment day. You don't have to worry about me got something to say and posting it on Facebook. You ain't got to worry about me being your friend, this, this, uh, unfollowing you, blocking you, none of that. If you, if God blocks you out of the book of life, out of the Lamb's book of life, that's what you need to be concerned about, honey. Listen here, if you can't tell what's going on in these days, people are dropping like flies from COVID and everything else. No one knows the time nor the hour. You think you got to you 90 years old to live for the Lord? And I'm telling you now, your days are numbered. We are in the end times right now. So there are too many Christians that are operating as soggy saints, not as spiritual snipers, not as spiritual soldiers, 
warriors as God has called us to be, to literally armor up and buckle up, knuckle up in the spirit and fight back and actually bring the, the heavens down to the earth so that we can win these spiritual battles against the demonic presence and powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness and high places that's coming to destroy the land, that's coming to destroy the earth. And we are doing what? Sleep. That's 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 what we're doing. We sleep. What are we doing? Watching TV. What are we doing? Twerking. What are we doing? Doing nothing. Mindless activities. Mindless activities. And meanwhile, the Satan's plan, Satan is up there laughing and developing a plan to destroy your life. To literally break you down, to destroy your family, to take your money, to leave you broke, to take your job, to, 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 to hurt your family with spirits of infirmities and cancers and high blood pressure and all of these things. And you fighting, 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 fighting and trying to figure out why you can't win, why you can't win. I'm telling you now, prayer and fasting and your heart posture will help you partner with God so that he can release help by the power of the Holy Spirit in your life to receive the freedom and the victory that is already ordained for your life in heaven. So all of these inactive soldiers, if you've been in the military or married to the military as I once was, we know that the, you got active duty soldiers and you got furloughed soldiers, you got retired soldiers, you got soldiers that just, what is it? They just do sabbatical on the weekend, you know, part-time soldiers. You have to soldier up every day. So ask yourself, are you active or are you inactive? Are you effective or are you ineffective? Now is the time to answer the trumpet call. If you listen to my podcast, there's a shofar that plays in the background because it is a trumpet call to battle. It is a trumpet call to battle. And I pray that everybody that listens to Flawed and Free podcast, that they will receive and answer the call on their lives. That every time you listen to that podcast and you hear that shofar bugle call that plays on my platform, that you will then answer and receive in your spirit the battle that God has called us to fight in our lives for him, for his purpose and his will. So let's talk about knowing your opponent, right? How can you fight a battle when you don't know your opponent? You must study the word of God. You must study your opponent, right? You have weapons, and you through the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, God has equipped you with all type of strategies and tools in prayer to change your life, to, to help you, to prosper you, to be productive in this life. That is what he has ordained for you, not to be laid out on the side of the road, hungry and homeless, not to be sitting here without and in lack. The devil is a liar. If you live in that way, then maybe you are in some warfare as we all go through, right? We all, the devil will come at us from the right, the left, the north, the south, and the east and the west. He will still come and he will come to try to hurt us, but you must fight back and you must take back whatever it is that the enemy is trying to take from you, whether it be your peace, whether it be your joy, whether it be happiness, healing, wholeness in Christ. He is trying to steal these things from you and you cannot let them have it. And you have to take it back. So I want to ask you a question real quick. I want you guys to comment. Is God in the same? Is he equal to Satan? Yes or no? Is God in opposition to Satan? You know, we talk about the angel of God and the devil on the other hand and how the, the God was talking and the angel was talking and all of this in rank and title and position. If that helps some of you rank title or position is God an equal to Satan? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. I see these no's. Yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. They are not equally ranked. They are not equally ranked. Who is Satan? Who is Satan? Who is Satan? 
Who is Satan? Can anybody tell me who Satan is? If he's not on the same level as Jesus, then who is Satan? What is his position? What is his rank? What is his title? Outside of being Satan, we know he's Satan. But wait, yes, Bianca. Bianca, is it Medina D? He was an angel, yes. And his name was Lucifer. So Lucifer was renamed Satan. Lucifer was renamed Satan in rebellion. Lucifer was an archangel. Lucifer was perfect. Lucifer was perfect in heaven and he was um he was a perfect beautiful angel and pride and rebellion is what caused him to fall. So therefore he is now a fallen angel. He is a fallen angel. So because of that, that makes Satan what? Automatically beneath you. Automatically beneath you. And why does it make the Satan suddenly become beneath you is because he was created by God. We were created by God, but he fell from grace. He fell from grace, was kicked out of heaven and was renamed Satan in his rebellion against the creator. So God created him. So he's not God's equal. Not only is he not God's equal, he lost his position. He lost his title. He lost his ranking. So answer me why when Satan starts running through your house, cutting the light switches off and trying to intimidate you and scare you, trying to mess with your household, trying to mess with your marriage, trying to mess with your business. Why are you running from a fallen angel? Why? Why do we do this? Why, 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 why? Why? Satan is only temporarily allowed to roam the earth and even the air because he's on a leash. God has Satan and all of his demonic power, all of them on a leash. It's a long leash, right? It's a long leash, but God has allowed him temporarily to roam the earth but he's on a leash. So anything that's on a leash, I'm not going to bow down to. I'm not going to worship. So why are we worshiping Satan? Why are we worshiping a dog on a leash? In my mind, he's a dog on a leash. And if you're a dog on a leash, what could you possibly do to me? I have dominion over you. I have power over you. And so for this appointed time, Satan has been given allowed some temporary access to where he, he resides and, res and roams in the earth, right? Remember that where the, where the money reside, where the money reside, where the money. But listen, let me tell y'all where Satan reside. Satan resides in hell in the lake of fire. He will be confined to the lake of fire when the day comes of judgment. He will be there. That's where he lives. So in this time, in this season, he going to take and he wants to take as many of us as he can with him because he knows God. He knows the power of God. He knows he's un he's already defeated when God when God literally when Adam fell, when Adam fell and the keys was taken, God and God, the Satan took the keys. And literally, God went down into the belly of hell. He took the keys back from Satan. And the keys of the kingdom is dominion, power, and authority. So when God died, was buried, and resurrected, and before he ascended, he went down into the belly of hell. He snatched the keys back from Satan, and he gave those keys to us. He gave those keys to us. So we have dominion over Satan and his fallen angel ranking and all of his, the third of the angels that were kicked out with him that are walking around as minions trying to destroy our lives. And literally they are already underfoot. 
Satan is already, we already have dominion over every creeping and crawling thing in the earth, over everything in the air. God has given us dominion to govern and rule and reign. He has given us power and authority to rule over demonic spirits or to rule over demonic powers. So therefore, there's no reason they have to become subject to us. They got to listen to the word of God and the Holy Spirit that indwells in us. We we have the power. We have the, we have everything we need to destroy the kingdom of darkness because they are already underfoot. They are already underfoot. So there are two levels of spiritual warfare. One is casting out demons, which is the deliverance ministry. The deliverance ministry is where we cast out demons. The second is the wrestling against principalities, powers, rulers, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's in Ephesians 6 and 12. So the two levels of spiritual warfare is found in deliverance, the ministry of deliverance, which is a miracle working uh, ministry. It is a healing ministry and it is a freedom ministry, right? It's, it's full of freedom, healing, love, and dominion dominion. So the keys of the kingdom that were given to every single believer to operate in their power and authority. And God handed us those keys so that we would have the tools that are needed to, to, to destroy the enemy, to annihilate the enemy. He has no power. He has no strength. He has nothing over us. So therefore we are supposed to be arising as soldiers and defeating the kingdom of darkness. God said we are seated in heavenly places with him. So if we're seated in the heavenly realm with God, right? If we are seated with God, then we are seated next to him where? In the third heaven. We are seated with him. So everything, there's nothing above the third heaven. Just so you know, for those that don't know, that is where God and the Holy Spirit, that's where they reside right? The demonic powers and spirits, they operate in the second heaven. So in the third heaven, there's name nothing up there. So if God said, if God said Ephesians 2 and 6, Ephesians 2 and 6, if somebody wants to put it in the chat, perfect. Ephesians 2 and 6, that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, seated with him. So that means we are above and not beneath. That's what that means. That means everything in this life, everything in this world, anything that can come against you, the moon, the stars, the, the time, uh, um, uh, natural disasters, tornadoes, rain, birds, bears, lions, oh my, all of that. Every single thing in this life is beneath us. Some of us are scared of spiders. Some of us are scared, right? But God did not give us the spirit of fear. He gave us power, love, and a sound mind. That spider you have dominion over. You have dominion over the snakes. You have dominion over the scorpions. You have dominion over all of those things. And there's nothing that should hurt or harm you. Luke 10 and 19, God said he has given us got the ability to trample and tread upon serpents and scorpions and all powers of the enemy. And nothing, nothing, nothing shall hurt or harm harm you in Jesus name. So we running from spiders. We running from birds. We running from bears. We running from dogs. We running from cats. Why? When you can literally speak to that dog and tell him to shut his mouth in the name of Jesus, shut his mouth in the name of Jesus. Some dog trying to bite you and you running from the dog. No, you decree and you declare and you speak to that dog and you tell him what it is and you tell it what it is. you tell him who you are and you tell him, shut your mouth, be gone in the name of Jesus. And I promise promise you, it won't be able to hurt you. That goes for everything, right? God has given us dominion and power over because he has positioned us in this way with him seated in heavenly places. So your position and righteousness, listen to me. I need you to listen to me closely. Some of y'all might have already fallen off and looking off in the sky and that's okay. But just know that your position, we've talked a lot about posture. We've talked a lot about position and power and prayer, right? But I want you to understand that your position in righteousness will determine your position in power. Let that sizzle in your spirit. Let it sizzle in your spirit. Your position in righteousness 
will determine your position in power. Okay? So you got to stand your ground flat-footed before God, bold with holy boldness, and you must take your position just as a soldier would in battle. You must take your position in battle and the authority that God has given in power to stand flat Footed and come against the enemy and destroy him because the the fit the fight is fixed. You're already a victor in the battle. So therefore, your position in righteousness will determine your ability to have the power that you need to fight the enemy. In Jesus' name, she says, "Stop yelling!" <laughs> you know, cousin, we loud. I'm loud, especially. In a situation like this, <laughs> glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God. I'm going to yell louder. I need to make sure the neighbors and everybody outside can hear in the name of Jesus. So understand and know that the sanctification comes through the renewing of your mind. How do you sanctify and renew your mind? God does. He transforms it. He renews your mind through fasting, through prayer. That is how you receive the purification, the sanctification that is needed to renew your mind so that you can remove the things that God did not plant so that God can uproot and sever those things that have been planted in your life, whether it comes through your family or whether it comes through sin or whether it's coming through some demonic power that some demon has taken authority or access over your life because you handed it over or because you've just been a victim to um, receiving an inherited curse through your generational bloodline or whatever it was, you might have you might have inherited a curse through the womb of your mother, through the umbilical cord and, and, or, or even through the birth canal. And so demons will operate in these places and will come against you so that they can destroy the plans of God. And so demons operate in the soulish realm. Demons cannot have your spirit. Your spirit belongs to God. So pe many have asked me and I've done a podcast on this. Can a Christian have a demon? Absolutely. A demon can, a Christian can be demonized. You can receive the Holy Spirit and you can be demonized. And so it's a lie. If somebody has told you that Christians cannot have demons, that is not true because every single person that I've delivered to include myself, I am a believer and a follower of Christ and I was demonized and I have been delivered from a number of things that were in my bloodline that were in my family from my own personal sin and iniquity so if someone has told you that they have told you a lie demons operate in the soulish realm what is the soulish realm where do where do demons reside not where the money reside I can tell you that but they reside in the soulish realm which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So they operate in your mind. So what they do, the battlefield is where? In your mind. And so if a demon is talking to you and trying to get you to do something, literally, you have to be able to learn how to discern a spirit, how to discern spirits when it's the Holy Spirit, when it's a demonic spirit, and when it's you. And so when they're talking to you, then you need to discern and ask the Holy Spirit, is this you? Is this not you? And you need to test the spirit. You test the spirit because they gain access and entrance to your life through your mind. That's where the battlefield, that's where the seeds are planted. So therefore they will come into there because they operate in the soulish realm and they will try to control you and they will try to plant dominating thoughts and things like that. Anytime you discern that there's a demonic spirit operating in that realm and speaking to you, you have 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds. And, and this isn't a time that God gave me that's biblical that I can pull a scripture to say, I'm telling you, you bind it, you rebuke it, and you resist the devil. God says you resist the devil, then the devil must flee. He must leave you. Anytime that you are pondering and, and lingering and malingering in your mind over something that a demonic spirit has 
has spoken into your life. You're ugly. You're fat. You're never going to make it. Um, uh, people are always going to reject you. You're never going to get married. All of these, these are demonic spirits that are talking to you. These are demonic spirits. So you must discern the spirit and you must take it before the Lord. And when you identify and discern that it's not the Holy Spirit, that it's a demonic spirit, then you got 30 seconds. Bind, rebuke, and resist him. Bind, rebuke, and resist him. Pull it out of your mind. Cast it out in the name of Jesus. That is a form of deliverance. And so people will say, I sold my soul to the devil. I sold my soul to the devil. Let me tell you right now, you cannot sell your soul to the devil. Your soul does not belong to the devil. Your soul belongs to Christ as well. It does not belong to the, de to the, to the devil. But what you can do is you can sell your allegiance. You can sell your allegiance. Remember when you was a kid at school? I pledge allegiance to the flag and blah, 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 whatever say, to the United States, to God may cover whatever foolishness. So you pledge your allegiance. You pledge, that's why a lot of people won't pledge their allegiance, long story. And so here we are. And so you can give over in agreement to the enemy, your allegiance. You can give your allegiance to the devil, but you can't sell it to the devil. And so the devil will try to trick you as he's done with people who have come into agreement with him and they have operated in witchcraft practices and things like that and said, I will give you money. I will give you wealth. I will give you prosperity if you give me your soul. And people will say, oh, I gave my soul to the devil. So therefore I can't come back to God. That's a lie. You can repent and you can give yourself to God and you can come out of agreement through the allegiance that you had given the devil. What is allegiance? I'm going to read the definition of allegiance. So any of you that may have been operating in occult practices and witchcraft and any sort of demonic avenue, demonic door or demonic portal that has that the enemy has told you, you can't come back to Christ. You can't be redeemed. You can't be restored. The devil is lying to you. You can. You can repent. You can be renewed. You can be redeemed and you can be restored. God will do that for you and you can break and bind the allegiance that you have given the devil. Allegiance is what? So I pulled up the definition of allegiance. Allegiance is loyalty or commitment of a subordinate or to a superior or of an individual to a group or cause. Look it up. So allegiance is a commitment and loyalty to a subordinate, to a superior. So who is our superior? Our superior is Jesus Christ, not the devil, not the devil. So you are not a subordinate to the devil. Or if you do, it's because you've given it to him because you've allowed him to because you've allowed yourself to become a subordinate of Satan. You've allowed yourself to come into agreement with Satan. You have given your allegiance to Satan and you you have made him your superior. And if that is the case, you are out of order, but God will redeem and renew you. How do demons get in? Most people want to know how do the demons get in? I've already made mention to some ways in the womb and um, through the umbilical cord, through the birth canal, through the sins of your life, through iniquity. What is iniquity? Iniquity is unrepented sin. What is believers? What are we supposed to be doing? Living a life of daily repentance. You go before God, whether you know you've done something or not whether you believe you're in rightful standing or not, you go before God in your prayer time and you ask God to redeem you, to restore you. You repent and you ask for forgiveness for your sins that are known and even the sins that are unknown. And so for those that I teach how to pray properly in the spirit realm, I, I, I have taught them how to strategically pray through prayers of repentance and confession, through prayers of thanksgiving and supplication, and even your warfare prayers and how they can be different and utilized and properly, because we want to be making sure that we are strategically praying and hitting a bullseye in the spirit against demonic spirits. Demons come in through legal access and open doors, through occult sin and practices in iniquity. Anybody that is operating in sage practices, anybody that is operating in Palo Santos, anybody that is using crystals, way, uh, African waste beads, anybody that is operating in astrology, horoscopes, psychics, psychic readings, mediums, Ouija boards, seances, um, tarot card readings, psychic medium, yoga, any of these things, these are 
um, demonic portals to the enemy. And so the enemy uses these practices to literally open up the door to sin through idolatry and immorality. These are tools that are used to um, gain access, to gain legal access to you and your body. And they will come and enter in in this way. And with any open door in your life, and when you invoke a demon, whether you're invoking them knowingly or unknowingly, it is you opening up the door through these portals and through these things, whether you're aware or unaware, and you are allowing the demons to come through your open door. If I leave my front door open right now, I cannot determine what comes in the door. What comes in the door? I can't say, okay, pain, you can come, you, you know, stay out, but peace, you come in. Mm -mm, don't work that way. And that goes spiritually in every spiritual aspect of your life. Any door that is open, you cannot determine unless the Lord has determined the door to be open that we know it's of good and it's for our, it's for our good. But any demonic doors that have been open, you cannot, as you invoke the demons and give them direct access to your life to your body, to your house, to your temple, you are then invoking whatever it is that they want to come in with. If they want to come in with a legion of spirit spouses, that's what you get. If they want to come in with, with uh, infirmity, sickness, and disease to come through your front door that you left open, that's what you get. But you have, and I'm not saying that's what you get, like, ha ha, I mean, that's what will happen, right? They choose whatever they want. Why? Because you have left the door open. So stronghold what are those demonic strongholds is how the demon stays so we got legal access and authority by opening the door then we have a demonic stronghold that comes in and stays and so that's why legal access and authority is important and your authority in Christ is important and then we got to identify what strongholds are and how they're able to stay so a quick quick reference to a demonic stronghold is a a, is a stronghold or a enslavement, a bondage on your bound to a thing that has a hold on you, a very strong hold that actually it gives them the ability to stay. Where are strongholds found? Strongholds are found in the area of deep personal pain. Strongholds are found in the areas of your life of deep personal pain. How do you identify a stronghold? How? The grace of God. The grace of God will help you identify the strongholds in your life. The power of the Holy Spirit will help you identify the strongholds in your life, right? So there are things that are deep rooted. Some things are even beyond you that are in your ancestral bloodline, that are in your generational bloodline, that were planted many, many, many generations before you that have become strongholds in your life that you didn't even even have a chance to say no to because you were born into it. That being said, most of us don't know oh, that our great, 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 great grandfather was a witch or that so-and-so was, um, was operating as a witch as in witchcraft that, or, or what have you, right? We don't know. And so we're unaware. And so the grace of God will open up your heart. And as you partner with the Holy spirit through prayer and through fasting, the Holy spirit will reveal so you can heal the Holy spirit's job is to reveal so you can heal and you go deep down into the furthest area of pain and these things are not fun to experience nor re-experience but the ministry of deliverance meets you in that space and as God will meet you as you uproot the hidden things the secret sin the things that you don't tell people that you're struggling with those silent struggles that you struggle with the Lord will literally shine the light upon it and once the Lord shines the light upon it, then you can uproot it. Then you can deal with it. Then you can place it at the foot, at the foot of Jesus. But well, what must you do? You must pull back the layers of your life. All of the things that have been concealed, everything that has been covered up, right? They've been concealed and covered through coping mechanisms and defense mechanisms. Anybody that's been through therapy, counseling, and treatment, they talk about coping mechanisms. They talk about defensive mechanisms. Yes, these things you incorporate over 
time because you have dissociated. You have dissociated and disconnected from the pain. But that's what the devil wants you to do. Disconnect from the source, right? But your source is in God. And so demonically, he will keep you bound to the thing that you are dealing and struggling with. Keep it hidden, covered and concealed so that you can't uproot it. If you don't know the foundation in which you are being demonically oppressed, then you cannot be healed. Then you cannot be filled by the Holy Spirit because there's a demonic presence and power uh, occupying that space. And so the ministry of deliverance will help you uh, experience and partner with the Holy Spirit to reveal that area of pain, the area of pain. I'm going to tell you right now, you can go to counseling. I have nothing. There's nothing wrong with therapy. There's nothing wrong with counseling, but you can't medicate a demon. You can't medicate a demon and you can't counsel a demon. I, you know, for those that need counseling therapy, I, I think it's a great thing. I just think that you should partner with the Holy Spirit as to when you should be doing this because you could go lay on somebody's couch all night and all day, tell your story, and they can walk you out of there with a bag of medication of anti anxieties, antidepressants, and all you ain't doing nothing but medicating the demon. You're not, they're still there. You stop taking the meds, you stop doing what well, they still there. They're not, they're going to keep wreaking havoc in your life and you're going to be millions of dollars in debt before you discover that there's a demon that you need to be delivered from. So I would, I would recommend that if you believe or you think there's a demon and when in doubt, cast them out, don't play with it. Just partner with God in prayer to reveal whatever it is that you are being plagued with in your life. And you can't medicate the demon and you can't counsel them. Demons can't be counseled. Demons can't be medicated. Okay. They got to be cast out. That is the only way that you will be able to be free. The ministry of deliverance is a demonstrative, demonstrative, meaning demonstration, a demonstrative form of dominion. It is a default. The So what we do is as deliverance ministers and when God delivers you himself, because it's the Holy Spirit using myself and other deliverance ministers or even delivering you in your secret space, the devil Deli I'm at the end. Of I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit delivers you and we make a public spectacle of the devil. That's what that's what it is. Right. It's the kingdom of light defeating the kingdom of darkness. It's the best movie you will ever watch. If you've ever watched spiritual movies or, 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 or those, those, um, war movies or, or what do they call like the Viking movies, you know, and those sort of things, it's the best ticket to any show you could possibly get to literally see demons tremble, to literally see demons in fear of God. To literally see them run. Okay. I've had demons literally trying to get away from me and crawling out of the front door, begging and pleading, not with me because I, I don't have power. I have power through the Holy Ghost, but literally because I am an ambassador of Christ, because I'm a representative of Christ, because I have the power and the authority through the keys of the kingdom that I use to defeat the kingdom of darkness, these demons literally and they fight, right? They fight. I got to wrestle with them sometime, you know, and Satan gets mad and he cusses and he talks crazy. But at the end of the day, God still gets the glory. And so the kingdom of darkness is defeated. And I'm going to close out with the last thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about quickly, which is maintaining your deliverance. So getting deliverance is just as important, but maintaining it is all the more important. And so I'm going to give you four things that you must be cons be mindful of when you are seeking and desiring to maintain your deliverance. One is to pull down the strongholds. We've already talked about strongholds and what they are. If you want to listen to the replay, go back, or you can follow me as I go on my podcast and discuss and talk about this. The second thing is winning the battlefield of your mind, rebuking Satan's voice and Satan's attempts to gain access to you. That's the second thing. The third thing is to develop a strong prayer life. 
right? That is the anointing, the yoke that destroys the yoke of bondage. The anointing oil breaks the yokes of bondage. The anointing breaks the yokes of bondage. You go in prayer, you get into your secret space and you war and you fight back in the spirit and you get everything that the enemy's trying to take from you. So in this area, you need to build a solid, strong prayer life. And the fourth thing is consistency and commitment. Be consistent and be committed to Christ and be committed to the will of the Father in your life. Believe, 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 because no one will receive anything from God in unbelief. Unbelief is a, is, is a sin. Doubt is a sin. And if there's any way that you're doubting and you're in unbelief, even when um, in Mark 9, where God's called them faithless, right? Because there were people mocking and watching that didn't believe. They were, they, they did not have faith. They did not believe that these, this demon could get cast out of this boy. And so belief will hinder your deliverance. Unbelief rather. Unbelief will hinder your deliverance. If you're in your prayer and you're like, God, 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 help me, help me, help me. But in your mind and your heart, God searched your heart and he saw that you really didn't believe that he would do it. Then guess what? You're going to be still fighting with that stronghold. You're still going to be tussling and in the spirit realm with that stronghold. You're still going to be cycling through this cycle over and over again because everything in the kingdom starts with belief. From receiving Christ, salvation, and anything else, it all starts with belief belief, belief. So that's numero uno, numero uno. If you don't want to hinder your progress in life or your the, the ability to prosper in life, if you don't want, if you want to be delivered, you must believe. So therefore to maintain your deliverance, I'll go back through them one last time. We'll open up for any questions and I love you. Thank you for your time today. One was pull down strongholds. That's maintaining your deliverance. This is what we're talking about, closing out. Number two, win the battlefield of your mind. That's number two, win the battlefield of your mind. And number three is develop a strong prayer life. Develop a strong and solid prayer life. And number four is consistency and commitment. And I will add belief. I can add that as number five as belief, believe in God, believe in God for anything that you seek and desire to receive from the kingdom. Believe, believe, believe in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So we're opening up for questions, 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 any questions, if you guys are looking for me, you can find me on YouTube. I'm at Flawed and Free on YouTube. If you're a podcast listener, my podcast name, as you know, is Flawed and Free. You can go check out my website. I also have merchandise and apparel. Here's one of my one of my shirts from my website. Um, flawed and free. And I have merchandise and apparel there that you can buy all faith-based in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone seeking or desiring one-to-one -one deliverance, um, I can, you can email me at info at theflawedandfree.com or just go to my site. You can just click from my, from my site. Um, or if you're coming from Instagram, you can click the link in my bio go at the flawed and free dot com. I also offer spiritual mentor mentorship and consulting um, as well as led by the spirit of God. So I don't do anything that is not led by God. So I don't receive clients that I haven't received clearance for. Um, I don't even um, do deliverance on um, unless God has cleared me. So there's a process um, to receiving or getting deliverance through flawed and free. I focus on general generational bloodline breaking. And so it's pretty extensive and um, 
but I like to see people receive full deliverance, not just prayer, right? You're not just coming just to get prayer. Um, this is some real bloodline generational breaking focus um, that the Holy Spirit has me operating in, um, in my ministry of deliverance and healing. Um, and so because of that, um, God has given me a blueprint and a plan for how he wants me to proceed with the people of God um, in deliverance. And so it may be something you've never seen or never heard of anywhere else, but I only do what he tells me to do. So some people don't like it. That's OK. Love you. Mean it. But I have to do what God says and I won't ever debate with that. Somebody said I had asked earlier, how do you determine the difference between a testing of your faith? and losing your spiritual battle. Also, how long is the deliverance sessions? How do they work? So the deliverance sessions vary. I don't know how long they are. The, I've, the longest deliverance I've done on a person was five hours. Um, and I mean, five hours, no breaks, right? Five hours, just demon after demon after demon after demon after demon after demon. Um, and so I was casting them out. And I literally, it was five hours, right? That's not the case for everybody's deliverance. Sometimes it's been an hour. Sometimes it's an hour or two. Um, if anybody wants to share that's in this thread, that's gotten deliverance with me or through me, um, you know, that, that wants to kind of um, encourage the women of God here, um, please feel free to do so. Um, testing your faith and losing your spiritual battle. I'm not quite sure if I fully understand that question um, because the the fruit should be your life. Your The fruit should be what's happening in your life if you're winning or losing. Um, um, to some degree. Right. And, and there's, there, that can actually go, I could go further in depth with that. Um, prayer and supplication. Let's see. When does fasting, the fast starts tomorrow. The fast starts tomorrow. Um, yeah, the fast, the fast starts tomorrow for us and it's three days, the 22nd through the 24th. I see Tatum has answered that question in the chat. Um, again, she does answer your emails. Thank you again for your prayers. Did I answer your email, Shanira, or is this somebody else you're talking to? Can meditation be a way of demonic spirits to enter? What is the proper way to meditate? What do you mean meditate? Because there's a whole manifestation movement that's using some of this verbiage, um, to meditate and stretch. And they really talking about yoga and what are you meditating on? What are you what are you doing when you meditate? Are you partnering with the Holy Spirit? Um, um, so yeah, if you're not meditating on the word of God and partnership with the Holy Spirit, then it is not proper and in order. What if you feel overwhelmed trying to remember that God is going to fight for me? And so that's a demonic spirit. That is a demonic spirit. Um, that is a demonic spirit. You have to bind that spirit. You have to bind that spirit and petition God's prayer and help. I have a lot of prayers for help um, that I've done for people um, and sent to people to help them in warfare, um, to help them when they're feeling overwhelmed and anxious and all these sort of things. I'm trying to get all these questions. They're going so fast. Um could you please repeat the P's one more time? Yes, ma'am. The three P's were uh, power. Um, make sure I don't want to mix it up on because I talked about a lot. Power, uh, posture, and position. Power, posture, and position um, were the three P's that I used. Um, okay. How do you test the spirit? In prayer. In prayer. Um, you test the spirit in prayer. Um, the voice that you will hear the voice of God, the more you spend time and build that relationship with God, you will be able to, and ask, simply ask, right? Um, and if it does not align with the word of God, then it didn't come from him, right? If you can't, and I'm not saying find the actual scripture, scripture, right? Sometimes there's revelations we receive from God that are not written in scripture. But what I mean is, 
If it does not align, if it pulls you away from God, if it distracts you from God, if it keeps you from receiving anything, if there's if there's anything in contradiction, opposition from what God says in the word of God, then as you pray and you ask God, he'll reveal it to you. Mind you, the kingdom of darkness operates in secrecy. The kingdom of light does not. If there's something you don't know and you don't understand, you ask, 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 ask. God said, ask, seek, and knock. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask, and it will be given unto you. Seek, and the door, seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. That's what God said. He will not tell you to ask to leave you in the dark. Because if you're in the dark, that means that, um, that that's not of God, right? Now, God might say no. He might say not yet or right now. And so you might not get the answer you want. You might not get um the full plan in that moment. He may say, I'm going to give it to you later, right? And you don't know. But, um, but we walk in faith and in belief in God because we trust him that he knows what we need and that he will release whatever revelation and whatever we need to get from our now to our next at the appointed time and season. So you will always ask God for his divine power, timeline, and will. Nonetheless, his will above your own. So let's see. Um, I encourage you to don't hesitate. You're in good hands. Oh, Kishé is actually giving her testimony. Um, I got delivered by Miss Tina in January. One of the best things. Yes, yes, yes. That's my baby. Yeah. Um, all of everybody. I don't call everybody my baby. I love everyone. Um, and and God's just giving me that spirit to love like that. Um, as we all should. But um, yes, thank you, Kishé, for sharing. You didn't have to share. I was just, there's a couple of people in here. Um, and so um, just in case, sometimes people kind of need to hear or know someone that's experienced deliverance or the ministry of deliverance to not be afraid to step out and um, receive their freedom. So thank you, Kishé, for sharing that with everyone. Because um, we, we are, it's the word of our testimony. The word of our testimony is, is what we need to share, right? So that we can help free others and free the captives from bondage. Um, how, let's see, the entire process of deliverance is worth it. Trust God throughout the process. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. During meditation, someone said, I asked God to align me with his will. That's good. That's good, Rakaya. I asked for the Holy Spirit to guide me to be purposeful and intentional in the lives of others. I'm always ask, speaking to God, asking and listening. That's good. That's good. That's good. You gave some awesome advice, Rakaya. Thank you for your input in that area. Ask and listen. Don't just pray. Listen for the will of the father and pray his will in your life. He won't leave you in the dark. The enemy has been attacking me with fear about my calling and fighting demonic forces in my life. And the people God has asked me to pray over and cover with prayer. What can I do to overcome it? Prayer and fasting. Bind the spirit of fear. That's a demonic spirit. Fear is a demonic spirit. And so you should bind the spirit of fear and lose peace in your life um, and definitely follow me and partner with the Holy Spirit um, to see about, um, you know, understanding more about what the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to you um, demonically as far as any demonic forces that are trying to oppress you. Um, but the word of God, meditating on the word of God and continued prayer and fasting will help you defeat the powers of darkness, um, especially the spirit of fear. God didn't give you the spirit of fear. He gave you power, love and a sound mind. And so I would meditate on second Timothy one and seven and any other scriptures that you can so that you can resist the devil and he will leave you. Um, okay. I love you too. I love your passion for the kingdom. Oh, thank you, LaShonda. Yeah, I'm very passionate. I'm trying to keep up. I'm trying to keep up. Forgive me guys for those that I couldn't answer. I, my apologies. I'm doing my best. Um, oh, Kavaya said, pray about the ministries. Yes. Yes. The wolves in sheep clothing. 
the wolves in sheep clothing, Lord, yes, ministries, leaders, influencers that you connect yourself with. Amen. She, Kavaya prays that God exposes the character, intent, and heart. Yes, 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 Father. Yes, Father. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. That's good, Kavaya. That's good. That's that's a whole word right there. The wolves and sheep's clothing, two levels of spiritual warfare. So the one was um, the ministry of deliverance. Number two was um, um, prince wrestling, wrestling against principalities, spiritual wickedness, and high places. The wrestling of spirits. Um, what if you have family and friends that are dealing with saging yoga, African waist beads? What do you do? I would partner with the Holy Spirit in prayer. Take everything to God first in prayer. Um, do not enter into a debate or argument with people. Don't cast your pearls before swine. Some people are not in position or ready to hear these conversations. And, you know, so you have to discern in your spirit. Um, and be led by God as you're entering into these conversations with people. So you must pray. First, pray for them. Just pray. Pray that the scales be removed from their eyes. Pray that the Holy Spirit reveals to them the truth, the spirit of truth by the Holy Spirit. And so you're going to put, you, you may turn your plate down and fast for your family members. I have done that, right? And I've fasted for the revelation, for the word. I have prayed for God to send ministering angels as he sees fit to, to minister to my friends and family that are ignorant, unknowing, and unaware, not ignorant as in stupid, but ignorant as in they don't know, they don't understand the, what, what can happen to their lives. And so, you know, you just partner in prayer and you only move as led by the spirit of God. If God says pray for them and that's it, then all you do is pray for them. If God um, gives you a, a word to give, to speak it and, and, and call it out, then call it out. Um, if they don't receive it, dust your feet off and keep it moving. Dust your feet off and keep it pushing keep it pushing the scriptures i mentioned who mark 9 29 was one ephesians 6 12 okay i see shawnee's putting it. ephesians 2 6 um that was another one um second timothy 1 and 7 was another one um let's see i want to make sure i haven't forgotten any other ones Matthew 6 and 33 was another one. If anybody has them or, or wrote them down in their notes, please, if you don't mind, I think I, I covered them all pretty quickly. Um, yes, I pray and ask God to open their eyes. Yes, follow the Holy Spirit's leading on when you'll be released to address them directly, lead with love and pray for them. Yes. Oh, church hurt is real. Yes, it is, Latrice. Yes, it is. We have to forgive those that have hurt us, whether that's in the church or outside of the church. Um, unforgiveness is huge in deliverance. Unforgiveness is one of the biggest things that will hinder, delay, and prevent you from being delivered um, in the name of Jesus. So you must forgive. And sometimes you can't forgive in your own, no, some all the time. <laughs> Baby, I've had to cycle for unforgiveness a lot from church hurt or the people. Really, it's not church hurt, right? It's really the demonic spirits that are operating in the people of the church. I've never seen a church um, um, literally um, bust me upside my head. I, I have a church. I have, I have yet to see a church um, pull a brick out from the side of the building and knock me down. So I'm being funny. Just laugh a little. <laughs> so yeah, church hurt, church hurt. That's what we call it though. We call it church hurt. It's definitely real. I don't know a person that hasn't gone through it or been through it, right? Um, and so we must identify that it's a demonic spirit 
that is operating. They're religious spirits. There are, you know, all type of spirits, right? That we're dealing with. Um, whenever we've come into opposition um, with people who may be in the church, who may hold titles and positions and may be spiritual leaders, may be pastors and have big platforms. And so even these, the word of God says that even the elect will be deceived. Even the elect, that means your president, that means your governor, that means your pastor, that means your spiritual leaders, everybody. It does not matter who it is. The devil will use whoever allows themselves to be used by him. And if they haven't been delivered, it doesn't matter that they have the anointing. It doesn't matter that they have the gift of prophecy. It doesn't matter that they um, have a platform. They can still be used by the enemy to do the work of Satan. And so we can't look at the follower counts and, and the cars and the houses and the land and all of these other things and be like, oh yeah, they doing good. Let me follow this person. Let me commit my life to them. Look at the fruit, look at the, and, and ask God, should I follow this person? Should I be connected to this person? I know a lot of generals, a lot of generals that are working in the spirit realm that don't even have social media that I deal with, that I'm connected to, that you couldn't find them if you wanted to, right? Because they're not on social media. They're not on Facebook and Instagram. They're not. But when I tell you powerful, powerful, powerful men and women of God that just aren't on, aren't in a platform, right? And so they're doing the will of the father quietly, and they not they're not right so that's just that's just the way that it is right it's it's just the way that it is and there's really you know no way around that so i just want to thank all of you for coming on tonight and i gave enough time i don't want to hold us all night long we can talk i'm I, listen i'm a talker so i can talk all night long about God and about the will of God. Oh, somebody said they want to know about waste beads. All of, listen, all of these things, everything I let waste beads, they are all there. They're also a lot of those beads. Um, some people use um the beading, right? The the beading and the crystals and the things that are on there, they they use them. As a, as a, and they pray over them, witchcraft prayers, all kind of things they put in these stones and they call them healing stones and all of these things. And so, and they put them in, it's, it's a form of deception. It's a portal. It's a portal. Um, and so anything that anyone says, whether it be me or anybody else, if you have any questions or concerns, like, I'm not sure if this is demonic or is this is an occult practice or what's what's good and what's not. I know I've I put up a list on my Instagram and I put a list back up. Maybe I need to put it back up with all of the things, um, unicorns, um, all of these. These are demonic mermaids, demonic. And so, you know, everything. You take back to the father in heaven. You take them back to him and you ask him in prayer for him to confirm that you don't take anybody's word, right? And though I know I've received revelation from the Holy Spirit, you want to receive and come into agreement and understanding yourself. And so I don't care if you get a prophetic word. I don't care if you listen to your favorite pastor. You know, you take it back to God. You confirm it. And God will further reveal what he wants you to know and to understand about the things that we're ignorant and unaware of. But I am I am more than happy to support every single one of you in your journey through understanding, equipping you and empowering you to become those spiritual soldiers, those spiritual snipers in the kingdom of heaven. So feel free to follow me, follow and listen to my podcast. I'm on everything, right? I'm on, I'm on Apple. I don't know what you guys listen to. Amazon, Spotify, Pandora. And I just received a partnership with Charisma Podcast Network. 
And so I am um, connected to Charisma Media now, and I have been selected as one of their exclusive podcasts. Let me let me just let me just just put that one of their exclusive um, podcasts in the area of spiritual warfare. So if you have the uh, Charisma app or anything, then you'll see me amongst. Um, the other warriors in Christ that operate in prophetic spiritual warfare. Um, and so there's a lot of teaching um, and equipping and empowering. I'm, I've started already building the foundation for my women warriors for my warfare training. So stay tuned because um, I'm going to be starting a warfare, a women of War, warfare academy. Uh, Warfare Academy so that I can equip and train the women of God, uh, women warriors, right? Women warriors to defeat the kingdom of darkness. So um, make sure you're following and stay tuned for that. Um, I will soon be an author. So I have a deliverance book coming out and another ebook on maintaining your deliverance. Um, And so I'll be doing that as well. So there's a lot of things kind of coming down the pipeline um, for flawed and free. And so I can help and support your journey moving forward. So I just thank you, Tatum, Kavaya. I love you all. I pray abundant blessings and favor, grace and mercy in all of your lives. Tatum said, let's go. Let's go, y'all. Y'all ready? We starting tomorrow. I hope you guys are ready. You guys are ready. Danielle said, come on, Miss Exclusive. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I am um, listed on Charisma Podcast Network as an exclusive podcast. Let me not, let me put it out there. Let me put it out there. All glory to God. Not me, not me, not me. God opened up this door. God opened up this door. So I'm excited to see what what he's going to do through me for you because it ain't for me. This is kingdom. It's never about you, sis. It's always about the kingdom. It is always, always, always about the kingdom. So never about you. Never, 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 never. So I thank you. I thank you guys. I, oh, thank you, LaShonda. Thank you. Thank you. To God be the glory. To God. Yes. Mermaids, Marine Kingdom. Yes. Come on. Come on. No filter. Oh, come on. No filter. No filter. Reach out to me. Reach out to me. You might have to join my, my women warrior program so we can help educate the kingdom of God. Yes. Mermaids, Marine Kingdom. Who we y'all. I can't wait to do that teaching. I cannot wait um, to do that teaching on the Marine Kingdom, um, mermaid spirits. Ooh, Jesus. Um, oh, can can you leave with a prayer, please? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Congratulations. Continue blessings for feeding us. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Or well, where will that be? Uh, Saida, I don't know what you actually were answering uh, or ask or asking me. Um, so just follow me and DM me or message me if it's something. Um, but yeah, I'm on, I'm on most of the major platforms. Oh, oh no, okay, that never mind. That's not me. She's asking a question about the what's going on tomorrow. Okay, okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and close us out in prayer, so you guys can resume your evening. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father God. God, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for all of these young ladies on this platform tonight. God, I pray, God, that you go ahead of us, oh God, that you release and loose your angels, God, in great abundance over in and around and to surround, to encamp every single person on this line, their home. Right now, God, for every angel that you have loosed, God, to stand on guard, to force out, to drive out, to cleanse out all evil, wicked, unclean, lying, and tormenting spirits in the life, God, in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare healing and wholeness in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and declare that everything that the enemy has taken from them, that they will that they will be restored, that 
you will restore and redeem every single woman on this pro podcast this day, oh God. I pray, God, that they will receive a breakthrough in the name of Jesus, that they will receive, God, all that you have given to them, God, every scroll that has been released over their life. God, I pray, God, that you will stir up in this fast, God, and activate the gifts, the spiritual gifts that you have given each and every one of these women, God, to be equipped and to war and to, to fulfill the task and the responsibilities and the assignments on their life in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, Father, that you will help every woman that is here, every family, every child that is connected to them in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, God, that you will open up the windows of heaven and you will pour out, God, your blessings upon their lives in the name of Jesus. I just thank you, God, that you are building them and maturing them and growing them in the faith. God, I pray, oh God, that they will continue to seek and search for your hand, that everything that they put their hands and their hearts to in this season, that you will prosper, that it will be productive and abundant and full of grace and favor and mercy this day in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, God, that they will be delivered, that you will set the captives free for those that are bound and in bondage, for those, God, that are in, that are entrapped and ensnared by the fowler, by the enemy's hand in the name of Jesus. I pray right now and I bind up every demonic spirit, every demonic alliance, every demonic allegiance, every demonic association, every demonic covenant and contract in the name of Jesus. I bind up every demonic spirit that is hindering and opposing your plans and purposes of God into these women's lives in the name of Jesus. I bind them up and I destroy them now. I decree and declare that their works are dead, that their works are dead, that they cannot move, that they cannot speak. I bind the mouth of the enemy now. I bind and mute the ears of the enemy now as I pray this prayer in Jesus name that he will not use anything that was spoken tonight or shared tonight as a, as, as a tactic to a plan to sin and take back to the enemy to devise against the men and the women of God that are listening to this platform tonight in the name of Jesus. Cover them in the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. I bind their powers. I bind them right now in Jesus name. Every demonic work, every demonic work, root, fruit, entanglement, every demonic spirit in the name of Jesus. I bind them and I cast them out into the abyss or wherever you send them in the name of Jesus. May they not cause any further hurt, harm, destruction, distraction or delay in the name of Jesus. I call fire now from heaven to come down and consume every wicked power of wickedness, every demonic bondage that is in their life. God, I loose the fire of God right now, God, to burn up and consume every single thing, God, that is utilized against them, every power that's being used against them. Open up their hearts, open up their minds, help them to receive the will of God and the will of the Father for their life. We pray as they partner with the Holy Spirit, God, that they will be filled and renewed and restored unto you this day in the name of Jesus. Wherever you go, wherever you be, wherever you move in the land, that God will bless it, that he will go ahead of you, that he will cover it in the blood of the lamb, and that you will receive all that God has for you. All healing and wholeness and happiness and breakthroughs shall be your portion. Deliverance and healing is your portion this day in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. Thank you for even reminding me um, because I don't ever open or close generally uh, without um, opening and closing in prayer. And so thank you. I'm going to end this call and this broadcast tonight, but I'm not gone forever. Um, you can find me at Flawed and Free and on these social media platforms that I've told you about through IG. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. And I will see all of you in the world, in the land. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And may God keep you and cover you in Jesus name. Good night, everybody.